I started poking her, just joking around. That's just how I am, you know? She took my hand <laughs> oh? and she licked my finger. Oh, oh okay. And I was oh like, <laughs> I was like, Told <laughs> <laughs> What do you think we're doing around? We're just chilling, like. <laughs> I am a virgin because I am asexual and haven't really had a desire to have sex yet. Being a virgin is really important to me because it's a significant part of my religion. I think there's definitely a lot of assumptions made about people who are virgins. I think my favorite one is the idea that people think you can look like a virgin. My friends have always been wanting me to lose it. My friend wanted me to have sex with his cousin. <laughs> if you had your virginity intact still in my high school environment, they sort of just ignored you. When people heard like through the grapevine, oh, that so-and-so had sex, it was always seen as a bad thing. It is mandatory that we keep ourselves pure until marriage. I lost my virginity at 15 at a party in a garage. Hey, I'm Bree. I'm a musician and content creator. Nice. Hi! <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Rahan, and I'm a virgin. Uh, my name's Skylar, I'm just a normal dude, uh, <laughs> and I'm a virgin. Hi, I'm Kiani, I'm an artist, and I'm also getting a degree in marine biology, and I'm a non-virgin. Hi, I'm Vanessa, I study psychology and theater, and I am a non-virgin. I'm Nico, I'm 19 and I'm really scared my mom's gonna see this. No, Sam. Oh <laughs> if you agree with the statement, please walk to the circle. I feel or felt ready to lose my virginity. For me, I guess I'd, I've always been ready. I just never really found the right person, and I'm not someone that's very, uh, it doesn't really matter who it is, but I just want there to be some sort of connection between us. I don't want it, I'm not just gonna like hit it and just like, all right, you can go home, kick them out, you know? That makes sense. I mean, at the time, you feel ready? Cause they're like, she look good, I look good. It's time, it's time, it's, <laughs> okay. I'm ready. Was it with, did you know the person for a good while before you guys I knew, up? I knew it for a time, I wish I knew her longer. It was my first high school party. The whole time I was feeling like, dang, this is my first time. Um, I don't know what to do. It was like, I don't, I don't know what to do. She looks nice. I, did she expect me to do everything? Do, like, it, was, it was a lot of stress. It was, I just remember it being super stressful. Yeah. I think I was sweating. And then, like, I wasn't even sweating because of sex. I was just sweating. Like, I couldn't even put the condom on right. It was like, it was just what it was. Interesting. Uh, I identify as asexual, and I've never really felt comfortable in the past, in like the past couple of years or when I was in college, to lose my virginity. Versus now, I've come to a place where I'm more of like a sex positive asexual would be the term. And if I had a partner nowadays or someone that I like deeply connected with, I would be down to the idea of it, but it's still not something I'm like seeking out or whatever. Yeah, exactly. But if like my partner was like, yo, this could be like fun or something. And yeah. if I would do something random with them, like maybe I would have sex. <laughs> <laughs> so the question was, do you feel ready to lose your virginity? And um, for myself, I am not ready um, because I am Muslim and technically you're, or actually you're only allowed to lose your virginity or be intimate with anyone once you're married. So I am not married, nor am I in a relationship or have I ever been in a relationship. So I am just saving myself, saving everything until marriage. So um, once I get to that point in my life, then I'd be ready to do that the right way with my partner. When I first lost my virginity, I remember it was like talking to a guy for a couple days on Tinder. Um, he was just like, I have a place, do you wanna come over? It finally happened, we get into the room and it just sort of starts happening. And I was just like, take a deep breath, mm -hmm. ask him if he has a condom, right. and then let's just do this. Right. And it happened. He was apparently so high that he had forgotten that he had sex with me in the first place. Oh my God. I got a text message the next day being like, there's Carl's Jr. in my fridge, what did we do? Oh my God. I was just like, I can't do this, no. no. I, I need to find somebody else. Yeah. That can really hurt. Do you regret your decision at all, or are you like, you're good with it, the way um, it happened? 
It wasn't my favorite experience, but I don't regret it. You know, I gave my consent. I went through it, and I was just like, okay, I understand what I want now. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> for me, it was not completely consensual, so it wasn't really my choice. Um, he was like kind of threatening to like break up with me if I didn't. Mm -hmm. I was just like, well, I love him so much, and I don't want him to feel like I don't love him. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up doing it. And to be honest, like I don't remember much of the experience just because like I dissociated a lot. I was like trying to protect myself, but I don't regret it because I did my best with what I had, and like I, it's just like I don't think I could have changed anything because I vocalized like when I was uncomfortable, and it just he didn't really care. Mm -hmm. So um, I definitely was not ready, but um, I do have a better relationship with sex now. And I've made like a lot of progress too. That's good. Yeah, that's healing. Good. Thanks, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I wanted Thank to say you. I'm sorry that that happened to you. But everything too. does happen for a reason, and it's a learning experience, so it only goes up from here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I do believe I learned a lot, but it feels weird to be like that happened for a reason because, like, mm -hmm. in a way that would almost excuse his behavior. Yeah. And I know, that, like, with like good intentions, like. Everything does happen for a reason. I totally believe that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I did learn a lot from it, and I don't yeah. think I'd be here like talking about it if I exactly. if it didn't happen. So right. I get like how the universe works, and like, it's just how it happened. <laughs> it but happened, yeah. um, that's like not to say that what he did was okay. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I was taught what consent looks like. Okay. And I have all my disagreeers, please come forward. Funny seeing you guys all here. Yeah, right. <laughs> Love our society and school system. In sex ed, we were taught how to put a condom on, what chlamydia is, what AIDS is. You're taught everything except you guys even want to do it. You know? Yeah. That's a great point. Okay, so I went to an all girls private school, oh. and then we were partnered with an all boys private school as well. Mm. When I asked them what their sex ed was like, they were like, oh, the teacher said, we know you're gonna do it, so here's how you do it, here's how you put the condom on, and they told them everything. Mm. For us, it was taught by my PE teacher, <laughs> and, oh, okay. right? And so then he was like, the best way to prevent pregnancy is to be abstinent. And I was like, that tells me nothing, what do you mean? And then they never talked about consent like within that either. And so uh, when I reported my sexual assault incident, which wasn't the one that I described earlier, but um, I like did say no. And so I brought that up to their <coughs> attention and they were just like, okay, but you stayed in the relationship after. So that basically means you're consenting to everything else. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's not what that means. Like even yeah. legally. Yeah. That's so bad. And so I know. And I'm so sorry. then I went to my school counselor and she was like, I have a friend who's in a different police department. So I talked to that police officer and he was like, you could probably press charges against the first police department that you went to. But I was just like, so over talking to different police officers, I was just like, this is too much. So I just left it at that. So I think what's wrong is the fact that no one can agree what consent looks like, like what the green lights are, what the red lights are, and just like even a yellow light, that should be stopped. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. That's really well said. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I learned that whenever something happens, I kind of freeze. And I was um, uh, assaulted at one point. It was during a dance. Those dances, I do admit, they kind of turned into a grind fest. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that's all fun and everything like that. But then this one guy who I was with started getting very touchy with me. Okay. And it's very cramped. Like, I try to move, somebody pushes me back. I can't, like, leave. So mm -hmm. first thing that happens to me is, like, my body sort of freezes. And it was kind of like a should I let him keep going? Should I keep playing until I have an out? And it, my mind was kind of racing, but I was kind of frozen at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then finally, he took my hand, took me out of the crowd, and started walking towards the bathrooms. I just ran off, and I mm -hmm. went and found my friend group, and I was mm -hmm. just like, he thought I was consenting. <clears throat> that was definitely not it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it definitely was kind of hard to figure out the idea of concept at the time. Yeah. It sounds wow. like he just assumed and mm -hmm. that you should never assume someone has consent. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm really sorry that happened. Yeah. And yeah. especially, I was a sophomore at the time and I was definitely very much a virgin, so I was just like, 
no way in hell am I doing this right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, for the longest time, consent means marriage, but I realized that that's not always the case because there could be assaults in marriage. Like, if you don't want to do it, then you don't have to, you know, because it's your body, your choice, and just because you're married to that person doesn't mean you're obliged to, you know, follow through and do that with them. So um, I just have a vague idea of the whole subject because it's kind of like an untalked about topic um, in our religion. And But um, just hopefully down the road, once we actually get to that point, then we're, we gain more knowledge and education on it. So it could be a better experience for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually grew up in Minnesota in a town <laughs> of um, a thousand people. So, uh -huh. you know, right. really awesome sex education, as That's you can assume. So fun. Of course. Honestly, it wasn't, it wasn't probably the worst, but since I'm asexual, I don't really have a sex drive either or whatever. So I was like, That's so confusing. I should try yeah. to figure out what this is. And so then with my first, like, boyfriend um we had been like dating we met like first week of college and everything and it was going all swell and everything and then it was kind of getting to the point where you like assume would probably like you know start like kissing or like have, <laughs> have sex and, <laughs> like that. and i was starting to get really like anxious and nervous like how am i going to tell him not only that i'm a virgin i guess i didn't really care that much since mm. we are all like you know still young but the idea of being like i like don't want to really be physical with you really was eating at me and the idea of having a conversation that's like intimate like that is always hard for anyone and I didn't know how to bring it up to my partner at the time and we were just like in his dorm room or whatever and I just started like crying and I was like I don't like know how to tell you this but like I like identify as asexual and like if you don't want to be with me because I won't like have sex with you like I understand like I like felt broken which is something that a lot of asexuals feel but it's so not true like everyone is valid and everyone can be loved and you don't have to have sex to be intimate with someone and I just remember in that moment such a low point and just always growing in communication from there on out and I hope no one ever has to feel like they have to feel like someone won't love them because they won't want to be physical with them or something yeah. so never entirely had to deal with that, only on a few occasions. Um, one in particular, uh, I was just picking up a, a lunch pail from, from my friend from work, and we worked a different shift than the girl ahead of us, and I texted her, like, hey, can you bring my friend's lunch pail over? And I, I knew she was into me, just by the way she would look at me, and she would try and talk to me, I'm like, okay. And then we just ended up hanging out in her car. And we're just talking, that's just how I am, I just like to talk with people, totally cool with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I started poking her, just joking around. That's just how I am, you know? She took my hand oh. and she licked my finger. Oh, okay. Shit. And I was oh my like, gosh. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Told you. what do you think we're doing around? We're just chilling. Like, like we're just like, like right after, she, she straight up told me that she wanted me to fuck her. Whoa. Legit like that. I, I was that. just like, I literally, I stopped looking at her. I sat in my chair. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was just like trying to process everything. Like I thought we were just vibing and we we're just chilling, and that that was that was a turn on, but then also a turn off. It's like that wasn't my intent for you to come over. I just needed to yeah. bring my, you to bring my friend's lunch pail, yeah. and uh, you just want to get it on like that. Yeah. It made me feel a little weird around her because mm -hmm. I thought we were like gonna be friends, mm -hmm. and then it was just straight shot somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. I think it's interesting that if like a more femme person were to present the story, the like narrative would be totally different. And I think that's really interesting to uh, consider, like if a guy like came onto a girl like that during like a lunch work thing, the circumstances would be so much different versus like we're kind of like laughing with yeah. you versus yeah. like- No, I like that you said that because those kind of like biases pass us all the time. We never really realize them until someone brings it up and yeah. you're absolutely right because I totally would have changed the whole, like the way I saw everything. I've been like, that's so scary. It's just how it is for like for the male, if you're more, you know, masculine, they expect you to always want sex all the time, mm -hmm. you know, but sometimes it's just not what you want to happen. And it's not really spoke about either when like you're a victim of like sexual assault as a man or if you're more masculine, they're just going to be like, oh, well, what was wrong with that situation? Mm -hmm. So it's like it's in that situation, like my friends in a joking way, they would think something's wrong with me mm -hmm. you know? as in like, why didn't you do it? Like. Yeah. Are you gay? Yeah. Um, for me, I think they see it, or they have seen it, sex as kind of just like a, a fun activity, but I've seen, I see it as so much more. You value it more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So like, 
a good foundation first, yes. where you guys have that trust and like that love embedded, exactly. where it makes sense. If we're gonna be doing this together, I have to feel like we're both in this together. Yeah. And like, it goes even further than just that moment. Yeah. Cause, uh, right. yeah. It's not physical, it's like your soul connection, you know? Exactly. Your souls connect and you will connect forever. You Absolutely, know? Yeah. yeah. I think it's also important to um, note that not everyone agrees that it's a soul connection and yeah, just opening the conversation oh, yeah. about yeah. people have different perceptions of it too. So absolutely. I think that's important to know and that's why there can also be like not equivalent forms of consent, consent too. If right. someone like thinks of sex as something that's super important and spiritual and all that, but someone else is like, oh, it's just like right. exercise. Yeah, it's just another daily thing. thing. It's just <laughs> 3 <Together. PM. laughs> We put too much importance on virginity. Yeah, I think there is too much of an importance on it. I think it's made out to be, it's just gonna be amazing and this is how it's gonna be. Everyone like talks it up, everyone talks a big game about it. And sometimes it can be. I've had friends who say they're like, gonna wait for marriage and they do. And then they tell me like, that was it. Like that's what the, all the hype was about. And so then they're just like, they've gone like their whole lives identifying with this one thing that they've never even really experienced. And then it's just like shattered. And they've taken on this identity for so long, then they're like, I don't know who I am. And like, that's something a lot of my friends have struggled with. Um, I feel like there's not enough conversation about how you feel after the fact, if you are previously really tied to the concept of being a virgin. So I'm like 50-50 on this. There, it should be importance on it, just for the fact that if you do slip and mess up, you can have a kid. And I guess that's a big thing for me is why I'm still a virgin is that I don't, I'm not ready for kids yet. Mm -hmm. um, and also with virginity, uh, ever since like all the way to, for me, all, all the way to elementary school, I've heard girls losing their virginity, which is crazy for me to think. The joking adds to it. Like we all joke around with the topics and stuff, but it, it just adds to the, the importance that we, that we view it, so. Mm -hmm. I hear what you're saying about like, we maybe need to have the idea, like the word virgin or virginity to have conversations about it. But when you think about it, there's so many things in life that we don't have like a label or a word for. Like even just thinking about like, oh, like having kissed someone. It's not like, oh, like yeah. let's come up with a word for someone who's kissed someone. <laughs> like I'm a sex haver, I'm a kiss haver. Yeah. Like it's like even right. thinking about the idea of virginity, I think the importance that's put on it is like very toxic because it is talking about like usually the idea of like penis in vagina sex and it's like, <laughs> yeah. like that sounds like really like stupid to say like, but it's it true. is like yeah. what people's like, I'd say mainstream notion of what is virginity and it's like making this like pedestal of purity right. and mm -hmm. this heteronormative experience of what is virginity and I just think it's yeah. outdated and should be eradicated. Right. <laughs> I think it very much like pushes forward the idea of purity culture because if you also look at the definition of virgin, it comes from sexually intact women. And that's implying that it only happens to women, only women can be virgins. And that's, we know that's not true, I mean, yeah. <laughs> right? I take issue with the fact that it also says sexually intact, like as if you lose something and you're all of a sudden destroyed. <laughs> and like, you don't lose anything and like right. it's still like a great experience for both partners, hopefully. It's weird that we felt a need to put a label on that part of women who are sexually intact, as opposed to someone by. Word things so perfectly, right. it's hard Thanks. for me to speak. I, I feel like, uh, I feel like, I'm, like it's word crazy. vomiting, so. No, it's perfect, I love it. I think for me when, I don't know, just the environment that I grew up in, with how high school was, I felt like it was kind of like, if you're a non-virgin, you're one of us. If you're still a virgin, it's just like, you kind of forget that you exist. So that was sort of like my perspective on that. Yeah, I was listening and I was like, wow, that's really cool how you guys like think about that. For me personally, <laughs> for me personally um, I think there is a huge um, importance on keeping your virginity. It's not more like you're virgin or you're not, it's how you lose your virginity and how you should or we're supposed to lose our virginity is by being married. And um, so for myself, like I hold the same expectation for my future spouse that because the same regulations apply to him, you know? He mm -hmm. had to stay a virgin um, until marriage. And actually, in our religion, like, doing anything intimate, getting close to anything that goes without meaning, like, um, hand-holding or just, like, kissing or anything, all of those are strongly prohibited. And it's because 
it's, it's all sin. If I fall in love with that person or if they come into my life and they're not a virgin, then it would be okay if they understand that that was a sin and they ask for forgiveness. Is how it works, basically. I never knew all that. I guess this is just like an open-ended question. Mm -hmm. How have your perceptions of virginity changed from when you were younger to where you are now? Like, is there any difference, something new you learned? Yeah, mine definitely has changed for sure. Mm -hmm. And I remember like, around the time where, you know, I was debating about losing my virginity and stuff like that, I kind of ran into some people, you know, when I was online dating. Like, as soon as I tell them, it's like, it's almost like they're kind of fetishizing me in a way where it's just like, you're a virgin, I'm ready to take that. Yeah. And it's just like, they're just trying to figure out, like as soon as I have one date with them, they're just like trying to get it in. I'm just like, absolutely not. No, stay yeah. away, mm -hmm. six feet apart. Right. <laughs> I only like asked that because I grew up Catholic, so I thought I was going to save myself for marriage too. And I grew up thinking like it's going to be a beautiful, magical thing. It's only meant for my husband. And then it obviously just didn't work like that. And so after that happened, I kind of had a weird relationship with sex for a while. But then it changed my perspective on it a lot. And I was like, it's just like a normal thing that people can do. And so I didn't really want to put it on a pedestal as much as I had before. There's a lot of gray matter when it comes to virginity now. I know a person out there that she didn't want to be a non-virgin anymore. She didn't want to have sex, so she let him uh, put in, you know, do anal instead. Actually, in our religion, doing anal is prohibited. It's like not allowed. So anal is not even a, like anal is not allowed. <laughs> um, but for me, like, if you were to like lose your virginity, it would be uh, a man and a woman having intercourse. There's no other, there's no gray area. It's interesting that the definition changes among different cultures and religions too. Yeah. So that's why it's kind of weird to be like, this is a virgin, not virgin. Because yeah. we all <clears throat> believe different things. We all believe different things. Exactly. So <clears throat> I personally, I don't even like know how to answer the question because I don't agree with virginity as like a word or a concept. I feel like the idea of being open about what I have and haven't done is more important than being like, yeah, I'm a virgin. Like yeah. I just do what I want, like, whatever I feel yeah. is like yeah. comfortable for me, so. I have been judged for my sexual or non-sexual choices. <laughs> Would you look at that? Okay. <laughs> it's almost like you can't do anything without being judged. Oh, oh my God. Oh. What? <laughs> Where? <laughs> there was times that even I judged, and then I was, now I look at it, I was dumb, an idiot, you know? Because when I was judging, I was probably like, in high school still, I was still immature. It was just very immature actions for me. And then now that I have hindsight with it, it makes me think like, why is their actions, their beliefs affecting my day? This question gives me a lot of anxiety um, because like I have been like called like slut, like whore, like that doesn't bother me. Oh, but yeah. um, my experience is a little different because when I was assaulted and I started talking about it, um. I had to talk to my mom and um, she kind of like asked me like, well, why did you like get in the car? Like, why were you at his house? And um, I guess like putting more of the blame on me, which is really difficult because she's my mom and she's like, sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, she's like supposed to like take care of me and like yeah. uplift me and it's just hard because I like go to her with this like huge thing that happened to me and just for her to react like, why would you do that? It's like, I. I don't understand like why that was my fault. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like everyone like always tells me like, it's not your fault and like I know that. It's just, it's hard like sometimes I'll get caught up in being like, oh I guess it was my fault because I did choose to date him and like I did stay. But to my credit like he was like mentally abusive and like sexually abusive so I didn't know how to leave and I, grew up thinking like, oh, you date to marry. And so I wanted to make it work so badly. And so that's like why I stayed and like, I just wanted it to work out. And that's how like, I was just taught. Um, and so then like, after the whole experience, I was like, I guess like, I need to be able to like, take care of myself and set my own boundaries and know when to leave. And it sucks I had to learn it the hard way, but at least I know now. 
and I know it's not my fault and like it is like something that still sticks with me from time to time but I'm learning how to like be better with it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. yeah. Probably have a different experience than most of you guys or I guess all of you but like with being <laughs> so open about being asexual like there's not many people who talk about it especially online even in real life and everything and I feel like I've been like immensely judged for it and even in my videos about being like asexual primarily on TikTok um, I get like so many death threats and people wow. being like you just can't have sex like you're ugly what like you hell? wouldn't get laid like you're a blue-haired girl <laughs> like even for me and like such a strong person I feel like it's hard to get thousands of people telling you this is fake and even for me sometimes it's like is this fake like everyone else feels this way why do I feel this way and sometimes even for me it can get like hard and be like damn like am I broken which I know is not true at the end of the day but yeah, I think for me, um, I've been judged by like society or like my peers that, oh, she's a virgin, like why, like, you know, <laughs> type of thing. But it's just like the Western point of view or whatever that like, oh, you never had to first kiss, like, like why haven't you kissed anyone yet or something like that. And I'm just like, oh, well, I'm not allowed to, I'm not supposed to, you know, like, I don't know, like, and that's just like growing up, it was just harder to explain that. And it was just harder for me to explain like, like, uh, accept that about myself. But then, you know, as you grow older and you understand that people are just different and, um, you just hold yourself true to your values, then you understand yourself more, you know? Um, so I feel like I have definitely been judged, but I feel like if I were not to be, like, God forbid I wasn't a virgin or something like that, or if I have done something, I would have been judged, especially, like, people, um, like, in the culture and the religion, they would judge me for, for doing such and such, you know? So it's just, like, on both ends, like, you'll be judged either way. I've been questioned if I'm gay, even from my own parents. Uh... You too. <laughs> it doesn't really bother me. I've always been, even with my friends, I've always been very open on my sexuality and I'm a virgin. And like, they've, they've been really cool about it. Like they would joke about it, but just as friends, but never really like poked me hard enough to where like, dude, we're making fun of you because we just don't like yeah. the way you are. They've always been really cool about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think just the way I've, I've carried myself with that, that, oh yeah, I'm a virgin. Like I'm not telling everybody, but just like, just the way it is. Mm -hmm. They've always been pretty cool about it, but for, from from a judgment standpoint, they've always uh, it's always been in, in a joking way. In a joking yeah. way, yeah. Because yeah. it's not the biggest part of you, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. It doesn't define you. <laughs> Bye, guys. Yeah. Oh, I love you guys. One, two, two, three. three. Woo! Woo! Yeah. 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 To virginity. <laughs> <laughs> to virginity and beyond. <laughs>